Namaste. In uh, the previous episode, Chidakasham 15, I made some comparisons between the Hindu, Vedic, ancient wisdom or ancient science on what they thought, what they believed and what they said as the Hindu cosmology and use that to drive home the point that the macrocosm is same as the microcosm. We talked about the, the, the stages of evolution which is Akasha, space, Vayu, air, movement, moving force. Air is a moving force, what we call as air. The Agni or Tejas which is fire and light and then Apaha which is water and then Prithvi which is the earth, earth element. And each of these five stages are seen as five elements. And each of the elements is supposed to have been formed by the previous elements. So earth was formed by the previous four and water was formed by the previous three and Agni was formed by the previous two and Vayu was formed by space. And space itself came from the original thing to one dot. And these five are called Panchabhutas. Bhutha, basic elements. You also said that the intelligence of how this transformation happens and how the whole thing sustains also came from the same dot. A couple of other points which I thought I will touch from cosmological point of view, okay, which links to Hindu cosmology as well. So the blue dot, why did it and how did it create this space? Okay. The why is not as important as how. Okay. The theologists will say, if you ask me why, somebody will say it simply or somebody will say it's divine will. But how? There are uh, almost the same uh, let me say explanations from our Hindu scriptures as well as from modern science. The Big Bang is nothing but an explosion which is like something turned, churned. Okay. Some movement happened. Otherwise, what was otherwise quiet got activated. From a non-action stage it became to a action stage. Okay. Some schools call it a spandan. Spandan means a pulse, some pulse, vibration. Okay, some vibration. And that vibration or the pulse continue and continues even today. And whatever is happening in terms of changes That spandan is still active. It may be in different forms, different intensities, different intelligences working to the spandan at different points in space and time. But that spandan is working. Okay. So the fundamental pulse which created that okay. created not only these five elements but also movements and it is sustaining this with a rhythm. So it's not a simple force, it's not a simple vibration, but it's a very intelligent vibration. So it is this school which says that everything is in vibration. Okay. And fair enough, so today we see that uh, going beyond the subatomic particles, the string theory of physics talks about vibrating particles or vibrating elements, not particles. Okay. The string theory is a mathematically strong theory which says that there must be another element 
which forms the currently known and proven element and those are called strings. They are vibrating strings like a rubber band. You go to string theory and Google and see there are some simple YouTubes available in English and Hindi also I have seen that. Vibrations. And of course because of string theory they say that there are 11 dimensions but we are only talking about 4. 3 dimensions of space and 1 dimension of time which is what is perceptible by us but there are actually 11 dimensions. So that's a separate uh, discussion both in terms of uh, Hindu science, Vedic science and uh, modern science. So this 11 dimension, 4 dimension issue will keep aside. Not to worry about that. But essentially it's a vibrating, vibrating strings which come together and vibrate in different forms which creates this 3 dimension, 4 dimension space, space and time. Time is a co-evolute of space. That is what uh, modern science says. Space and time are seen as one. One fabric. Einstein's famous space-time fabric. And our philosophy also says that the sense of time is basically because of movements. If there is no movement, there is no sense of time. If you are still, there is no sense of time. And the best example you have is a deep sleep. And everything is still from your senses point of view, not, not internally, physiologically, but from senses point of view. There is no sense of time. Anyway, that's a separate subject in terms of how time is explained in Hindu science. Oh, okay. But nevertheless, space and time are seen as co-evolutes in all schools of Indian wisdom. In space happened, time also happened. Okay. So everything happened after space and time. So what was there before space and time? Was that dot which expanded? No. That gap we will see a little later now. Okay. So the spandan which created that action, activity from non-action. Okay. Continues even today. Okay. This is also called as rhythm. Okay. Vedic uh, parlance you will find uh, relevance to the way I have understood is uh, Varuna, Maitra Varuna, God's the seven Adityas or eleven Adityas that we talk about in Veda seem to be, to my understanding or my inference, okay, linked to these rhythms or pulses. Pulse, not pulses, pulse or the spandan, vibration. The activity or vibration is also called as rajas. Okay. The non-acting stage of the original source and it was not vibrating, it's called sattva. Okay. The action stage is called rajas. So sattva and rajas are two modes of the same we will come to that a little later. Okay. So, spandan, rajas, vibration, okay, vibrate string theory, movement, moving force, okay, the rhythms, all of them are linked. They are all allied topics. Okay, you need to understand. Okay. So, there is a rhythm here also when movements happen within your body. There are some rhythms. Okay. We will see what kind of rhythms that we have in our body. Okay, a little later. There is another uh, cosmological theory uh, that impressed me very well. Uh, recently, very recent, I think it's about 2-3 years. Yeah. In modern cosmological theories, what was the state of existence just after Big Bang? Just after Big Bang. Probably before the cosmic uh, microwave background stage. A few seconds or few seconds after the Big Bang. And uh, that has come through by explorations into gravity, quantum gravity. Okay. And they said the group field theory of cosmology. Now I have only read the, the gist. Okay. Since it attracted me, appealed to me, I am telling you. The group field theory of cosmology, which is the latest, sees the universe as a quantum Gravity condensate. 
Okay, so what does this mean? That it means that the cosmological dynamics at that stage, you would, as an exploration of quantum gravity, okay, looks like fluid dynamics, hydrodynamics. It's almost like a fluid. Okay, we talked about liquid fluid in the previous episode. Okay, before particle stage, before particle stage, there were fluids, and on those fluids were the waves. Okay, and then those things became particles, photon being the somewhere in between, sometimes waves, sometimes particles. So cosmology is also looking at a pre see closer to the Big Bang, what was the cosmological stage? They are losing goofy theory to say that it's like a fluid. It behaves like a fluid, like a hydrodynamics. It's a condensate of the essence of what was there in the Big Bang, the source of the Big Bang. The condensate, the essence, okay, is what is there as a fluid and it behaves like a hydrodynamic stuff. Now, it's very interesting for me because uh, a similar analogy is found in Advaita as well, where they say that the whole creation is like a sea and what you see is only a wave on the sea, the disturbance. Okay. There's no, nothing different. It's a continuous stuff. There's a sea, there's a wave and then there is matter that's created. That's what Advaita says. You keep seeing matter but you don't see the, the waves and the sea behind that. It's a huge sea. Okay. And that sea takes you to Brahman, the state of Brahman, which supports the whole thing. It's not visible to us. Okay, and it's not visible even to the cosmologists and scientists, but now they are able to say that it's like a fluid, a sea. Okay. And that fluid creates waves and that waves converts into particles. The same way Advaita says, it's a huge sea on which there is waves and this waves is what is creating this impression of matter and energy. I'm only giving you a modern cosmological interpretation of this Advaitic example which has been discussed in detail in all Advaita stuff from a psychological mental model point of view. The third thing I wanted to talk about is, we talked about cosmic expansion. Okay, the cosmologists also say that there will be a cosmic collapse sometime, maybe billions of years later. Okay. But the whole cosmos will go back to its original state of the dot. So all this will get absorbed in some form. Okay. The way to visualize this, this Big Bang explosion is that there is something. So you have the basic elements and you have the intelligent process. There are two things here. The basic element and the intelligent process they both were unleashed. And this intelligent process working on basic elements created everything. So it's not that everything you are part of that inside. Physically you are inside that dot. I mean that, that makes absolute ridiculous sense to say that all the mass was there inside. Probably all the mass was produced by the basic elements with a intelligence, intelligent force. Basic elements with intelligent force started working and then with mutations created everything. That makes sense. The basic element, the basic intelligence which created mutations to create everything will also have the reverse process happening and everything will go back to the basic elements and then get absorbed into the tiny dot. That makes tremendous sense logically and exactly what Vedic science is also saying. There's the intelligent force, and intelligent force is called Shakti. Okay. And then there are the basic elements. Okay. A Chaitanya. Chaitanya. Okay. When they come together, it becomes Chaitanya. Okay. Intelligent beings. Everything is intelligent being, right? Otherwise, you won't. Not the way we talk intelligence. But if, if Jupiter is able to be together, if solar system is able to move to the same rhythm internally and across, right? There's an intelligence that goes on. The intelligence creates us. It, 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 it came from there inside. 
So the process intelligence and the basic elements came from inside. And that was unleashed because of vibration. That vibration is called Rajas. And when the cosmic collapse happens, it will take it back. That means the Rajas will be withdrawn. The Spandhan will collapse, will stop and there will be a non-action stage. When everything will merge back into that. So in our Sanskrit it's called Samhara. Srishti is creation, sustenance is sthiti and then Samhara is collapse. So what the cosmologists say or the same. They may be saying in a different language with different connotations, tonalities, texture. But what they are saying is in principle the same as what Vedic science has said. So in this process, what we have done is we have looked at cosmology and we also looked at vibrations, which is in twin theory. So in physics, we are covering the entire stuff from vibrations to subatomic particles to atomic particles to molecules, compounds, organic chemistry, cells, molecular biology, molecular chemistry, everything is explained by this. Quantum, subquantum, molecular, gross, everything is explained by that. Intelligence is explained by this. Okay. So these are, this is something that we need to understand that we are part of this cosmic process. Today. It has been visualized and you know, accepted in Vedic science and also in modern science today. Everything is just a mutation of everything else. And what the Vedic science is saying is that every element of that is represented here. The Panchabhutas are here. The moving force is here, working as prana. The Rajas Tamas I talked about is available as gun, uh, guna, gunam, as we say. Okay. Then the Brahman, which I told you, the, the condensate, the fluid condensate aspect, part of it, that element, the property is available with us as aham, or sense of why. And then beyond that is the ultimate source, which is Paramatma himself, or the Ishwara, or the Bindu, or the singularity, that you may call so if you view the singularity as a source of matter and energy, then you are mistaken. You are partly correct. I won't say mistaken, you are partly correct. But that singularity in modern science is not only to be viewed as the source of all matter and energy, but is also the source of the intelligent process, the intelligent force, which creates and sustains and, and you know, does the collapse all over again. And it acts in various ways. Okay. When you take that route, okay, then you will find that modern science and Vedic science completely come together. Okay. Most of our understanding today in modern science is based on quantum and uh, gross sciences. Molecular biology, cellular biology. But going forward in the years to come, in the decades to come, when cosmologists and biologists come together and then they talk about subquantum vibrations and how it changes the whole thing, okay, which will strengthen the quantum biology, which is a new emerging field. Cellular biology, molecular biology is taken care, which talks about our wellness, medicine and so on and so forth. The quantum biology is very important. When the quantum biology takes shape, then you will find that quantum biology and advanced cosmology, they take us more towards the complete conception of creation and uh, sustenance and withdrawal, destruction or withdrawal of things that we are talking about. Quantum biology is an interesting subject. I think we will deal it some other time.
Now we'll get into the list of all the building blocks that we need to look at.